I think the two words that describe Catherine the most are her honesty and her passion. What you see is what you get with Catherine. I mean, she is not going to mince words with you. If she believes something, you're going to hear it. One of Catherine's most compelling traits, and probably the main reason she's been so successful, is the girl does not take no for an answer. Catherine Hilker, or anyone that knows her would say, is one of the most remarkable people that they know. She has a generosity of spirit, a generosity of interest in others that really is remarkable. We go back about 32 years when I was working in the education department at the Cincinnati Zoo and Catherine was also in the education department. Catherine was asked to do a cat program and she said, what am I going to do? And I said, don't worry, I'll help you. And that was our connection. I met Catherine Hilker very briefly the day I came to interview her for a job at the Cincinnati Zoo in October of 1977. And she's felt like my big sister ever since. If you don't know Catherine well, you might not know that this extremely well-dressed and elegant woman is actually a farm girl and far more comfortable out literally clearing brush at age 82 in her yard than going to a fancy party. I grew up on a farm, um, on a working farm. My father was a contractor in Cincinnati. He loved to be on a farm. I had horses. I've ridden horses all my life. And in fact, the only thing that got between me and a horse was the cheetah. I met an animal named Angel, and uh, from then on, it was the cheetah. Catherine Hilker started many of the programs that have been key to the success of the Cincinnati Zoo. She helped start our education program back in the 1970s, which has grown to be the biggest education department at any zoo in the world. She founded our outreach to schools herself, the Frisch's Outreach Program, and even got the folks from Frisch's to fund it. And of course, all the work she's famous for with cats, both cat ambassador program here at the zoo, showing the world how you can get cheetahs to run every single day in a show, and of course, helping to save cheetahs overseas. Those are important programs of this zoo. And I can tell you, none of them she ever got permission for. <laughs> well, I tell you, the University of Cincinnati played a really huge role in my life. I spent my last two years at the university because I couldn't manage to get out of college in four years. So I spent the last two at Cincinnati. And I really think that's the only place I really received an education. The dean of the college, Dr. George Barber, uh, was a huge influence in my life in that he recognized my love of Africa and encouraged me to go. He had worked with people that I just thought were the most wonderful people I'd ever heard of in my life. Catherine's degree in anthropology from UC was important to her career. She went from Cincinnati to Africa worked with Dr. Louis Leakey, one of the most famous scientists in the world at the time, and from that developed a keen interest in what is it that we can do to really help protect wild areas, and particularly African wild areas. That he had an idea that if some young woman would go over and live with the chimpanzees, that they would find out a great deal, not only about the chimpanzees, but about us as people. And he actually invited me to do that. I, on the other hand, was too dumb to realize what I was being offered. And I said, actually, I think I'll do something with cheetahs. But there was another young woman who said to Dr. Leakey, that's exactly what I want to do. And I don't think any of us do not know that name. It's Dr. Jane Goodall. Catherine is like a sponge in her learning when she when she reads something, when she experiences something, she just sucks it in and holds it, and then you never know when you're gonna be the lucky one to be able to hear that experience or her knowledge. I'd like to know I've made a difference. Three minutes before I die, I would love someone to come in and say, oh my word, we just did a census of cheetah in Africa, and their numbers have doubled. And I'd say, oh wow, sayonara, everybody. <laughs> That would make me happy. Because of Sarah, because of many of the cheetahs here that we have raised in Cat Ambassadors, because of the Angel Fund, who was my first cheetah, these animals in the wild have an even better chance of survival. So the story of the cheetah is really a success story here. Sarah, you're a good girl. 
she has just accomplished so much in her lifetime from you know the schooling to the traveling to Africa way before anybody ever did to teaching and the effects she had on her students. She's an incredible, wonderful person. You have done so many incredible things in your life and so many things that I'm proud of for you and I'm just proud to be able to call myself your friend. Congratulations, Catherine. You deserve the William Howard Taft Medal. You have done tremendous work to help protect cheetahs and help protect wildlife for over 50 years. Your charisma has pulled more people into this cause, raised more money, and done more good than anybody I know. I love you, Catherine. A university that has played such a enduring role in your life takes the time to say, hey, you done good. That makes me very pleased.